So now that you have created a layout, whether through importing it from another entity or through using an industry template, how can you go and customize this layout further to make sure that your profit and loss or balance sheet looks exactly the way you would like it to? So in this video, we're going to look at some of the formatting options you have within the layout tool on Sift. So just a reminder, we're within layout and layouts and charts of accounts. And there's two very important things that you can do here. On the left, we can change the way the accounts are laid out in our profit and loss or balance sheet hence the word layout. And what this means is you can go and group or reorder or do various other things to the way your accounts are laid out within your profit and loss or balance sheet. Then on the right hand side, you have your charts of accounts. And this is a chart of account classification per account. So in this video, we're gonna focus on the left side and how we can edit how the accounts are laid out and some of the options and functionalities we have within this section. We're gonna look at the charts of accounts in a separate video, but both of these sections are very important because they will impact various different aspects of SIFT and how your statements look overall. Okay, so let's go take a look at some of the functionality we have. So at the top here, we have add format. So if you click on add format, you'll see there's three types of formats that you can add. And it's really important to understand the difference so you can make sure that you choose the one that's gonna make your statement look the way you would like it to. So the first option is to add a category. So for example, sales is a category. And what a category is, is it is a collection of all of the accounts you've put into that category, but you'll note that it has a total. So we're gonna go and create a category for rental income. And we need to select the category type. So in this case, as rental income is sitting within sales over here, you can see we're gonna choose sales. You could also have chosen other income if you wanna separate it out, it's really up to you. And then you're going to select sales. This category is really important because when you move accounts to this category, they need to have the same type or their type will change when it moves to that category. So just make sure you select the correct category type. We're then going to go and click add and now you'll see rental income will be added to the top of our screen. Whenever you add anything to a layout, whether it be a category, heading or equation, it'll always be populated at the top of your layout. And then you can go and move it down by hovering over the gray dots and you'll see a hand icon appears and you can then drag it down to wherever you would like it to be. So that's the first thing. We could go move it to below sales and now you'll see it sitting here. We're gonna put some accounts in this rental income category later on, but for now, I just want you to note that this category is called rental income, like we named it, and it has a total because it's a category and not a group. We'll notice that difference a bit later on. And you'll see on the right-hand side here, it tells us that it's a category, but currently it's an empty category because it has no accounts in it. We could compare that to sales, which is also a sales category. It also has a total, but because it has a whole lot of accounts in it, it's not saying that it is empty. Okay, so that's how you could add a category. Next up, you could add an equation. And this is really useful if you wanna include specific metrics or formula within your profit and loss or balance sheet. So say for example, you're really interested in your gross profit percentage, you could go and include that within your layout. So you would just name it gross profit percentage. You would need to tell Sift what formats it should be. So amount, number, or percentage. In this case, percentage makes sense. So we're gonna select that one. You'd need to tell Sift if an increase or decrease in this equation would be favorable. So as we'd like our gross profit percentage to increase, we're going to make sure that one is toggled on. And then we're going to build out our equation. And you'll see we can use accounts and groups and totals to build out this equation. So in this case, gross profit is most likely going to be based on totals so we're going to come here and we're going to look for sales so total sales less total cost of sales and then we're going to put that in brackets because that would give us our gross profit and then we're going to go and divide it by our total sales okay so now we've calculated our gross profit percentage and we can go and click add just to show you what's available here, this is where you can go and add accounts or groups. So you're going to select the category where that account or group has been created, and we'll learn a bit more about groups later on, but say for example, there's an account or group in expenses you would like to use, you could then come here and look for that account or group, and then you could go and add it to your formula. Okay, so this is how you can build an equation. You can then click add. And again, you'll notice that it populates right at the top of the layout. So we can go and drag and drop it to where it makes most sense. So it would make sense to put it under gross profit. 
you'll see that gross profit has actually already been calculated. So in this equation, I wouldn't have had to go and calculate sales minus cost of sales. I could have also gone and looked for the gross profit total and you'll see it does appear. And now that we've built the equation for gross profit percentage, it also appears. So that's just how you can build out an equation on SIFT and move it to wherever you need it to be. Let's go look at the last formatting option within add format and that would be a heading. So a heading is merely text. Unlike a category which has a total and can have accounts allocated to it, a heading is just text. So let's go add a heading called income statement and we're going to go click add and you'll see now this income statement has been added. It is purely a heading. There's no accounts in it like there are in sales and it doesn't have a total. It's just text. Again, we can move that to wherever we would like. So we can move it down there if we wanted, but I do think it makes more sense having this at the top. So we're gonna go and move it back to the top. So those are all the options you have under add format. You've learned how to add a heading, how to add a category and what it looks like, and also how you can create an equation. The next formatting option isn't under this add format section, but this is to create a group. And you can create a group by just selecting a few accounts. So let's go and select all of these direct cost of sales accounts. And we could then go and click group. And now you'll see this new group appears and on the right you can see it's a group and it's got this collapsible arrow. And then you can go and name it. So just remove new group and we're gonna call this direct costs. And you'll note that this group has a heading, but it doesn't have a total. So remember our rental income category had a total, total revenue. Well, now our direct costs does have accounts in it, but it doesn't have a total. But you can then go and collapse those so you can see a more summarized view or you can expand them. Very important, whether this is collapsed or expanded when you click save is how it's going to reflect on your overall statement and in reports. So if you would like to keep this expanded and just have direct top costs as a group but still see all the accounts, then on the right here you can click save and that's how it will reflect. So that is how to create a group. And now we're going to explore some of the other options that are available when you click on a specific account. So the first thing is you can click on account and then you'll see it gives you options to move to or group. We've already learned about group. You could also indent items. So that means to shift to the right or unindent them or shift to the left. So you can just click on those two buttons. And then you'll see there's this option to move to. And that gives you the ability to go and move accounts to different parts of the statement. So let's say I wanted to move both of these rent accounts to rental income, that category we created earlier so that it's no longer empty category. I could then come and select those two, click move to and go and look for rental income and then click move. And now you'll see rental income is no longer empty category. It has the accounts in it. So that's how you can go and move accounts once you've selected them. Another really useful trick is you can click on an item and then click shift and click on an item below and you'll note it will select all of the items in between. And so that's a really quick way of multi-selecting items and then you could go move those items to a different category or group if you would like by selecting over here. You'll note that it's got categories at the top and groups at the bottom or you could just reorder them. So say we wanted these to be at the top. Now that I've selected all of them, instead of just moving one, I can move all of them by dragging over here. You'll note that the little six pops up next to it and I can go move them to the top and now all of these amounts are at the top and have been moved to where I want them to be. So that's a quick way to work with different accounts. You can also go and deselect all of them by clicking on one and then clicking on shift and clicking on the one at the top and you'll note it deselects all of them in between. So that's a quick way to move with the data. Okay so so far we've learned how to work with this add format option and the options we have when we select a specific account. But now let's go look at what happens if we select a group. So remember we created this group direct costs. Well, if we select direct costs, you'll see that there's many more options that apply. Over here, we can say move to, so we could move the whole group instead of specific accounts. We could group it. If we wanted to group this group with other accounts, say purchases as well. 
We could also change this to a category. So remember the difference between a group and a category. Groups don't have totals, but categories do. So if we want to direct costs to be a category and have a total, we could click change to category and you'll now see that direct costs is a category. It's a cost of sales category because it's within cost of sales and it has a total, total direct costs. So that's how you can change it to a category. You can also change it back to a group. So just click on that category and click change to group. And that would be possible for any category that is not within the main layout. So what do I mean by that? Well, you won't be able to do it for sales. You know that it doesn't appear here because sales isn't within another category. It's in the main layout. There's no category that sales is sitting in. But when we had made direct costs a category, we had the option to change to group and that's because direct costs is sitting within the cost of sales category. So if you want to change things from categories to groups, you can do that as long as there is a parent category that that category is sitting in. Okay, so let's change it back to a group and let's see what else we can do. We can also delete this group and that will just delete the group, it won't delete all the accounts because those are accounts that are pulling through from your accounting provider. We could indent the whole group that we're working with or we could unindent it. And we're able to expand all or collapse all. So this is particularly useful if you've selected a category or multiple groups. So say we selected important sales group and this direct cost group, we could choose to collapse all and that is going to collapse them. And remember, if we click save, then that's how it's going to appear on the statement or we could expand all. And that would mean that now we would be able to see all the underlying accounts within those groups. Okay, so those are the options you have when you're working with a specific group. So let's just clear our selection. And now let's go look at a category. So over here, we have a rental income category and you'll see it gives us slightly different options. We're able to move it. So if we wanted rental income to be sitting within sales, we could move it to sales over here and now you'll see it's sitting within sales or we could move it back to the main layout so we can say move to main layout if you're ever moving a group or an account main layout won't be an option because remember I said groups and accounts need to have a parent category but categories can be in the main layout so not within another category okay so let's move that back to the main layout and click move and now we'll see that rental income is still at the top but it's not within sales so let's go move it back to under sales. And now we have rental income over here. Let's go look at the other options. We also have change type. So remember we chose this as a sales category, but if we click change type, we could go change this to other income, for example. And now if we click change, you'll note that the category changes to other income and the charts of accounts within this category changes. And so that's a quick way to change the charts of accounts, but we will discuss charts of accounts in more detail in another video. Okay, so we've learned how to change type. Again, we can indent, unindent, we could expand or collapse. And over here, you'll see is another way to change the chart of accounts classification. So we've changed it to other income, but we can go change it to revenue. And so what that does is it changes the accounts charts of account classification, but it doesn't change the category type. So it's still an other income category. You can also search for a specific account. So say, for example, I'm looking for my commission received. I can go and type commission. And here you'll see it will filter out things that have that word. So if I type the whole thing in, you'll see I have commissions under sales and I have commissions under expenses. And then I can go and work with those specific accounts and move them somewhere else. This is useful if you have a long list of accounts and you want to go find a specific one. A quick tip, if you wanted to move all of these accounts within important sales, but you didn't want to move important sales, you could select on that group, deselect the group heading, and then you'll note that all the underlying accounts are still selected and you could then go and move them or group them or do whatever you wanted with them. So that's another way to quickly select several accounts besides the one I showed you earlier, where you select one, click shift, and then select the bottom and it would select all the accounts in between. All of the features we've looked at within the profit and loss are also available on the balance sheet. And the other very, very important thing to remember is you'll note on the top right hand side next to the save icon is a red dot. And that's reminding you that you need to click save. So whenever that dot is there, it's telling you that you've made changes that you've not yet saved. And if you were to go and leave this page and go to a different part of SIFT, 
all of your changes would be lost. So please make it a habit of saving regularly. I suggest that you save after every edit just to be safe so you don't lose your work. But you'll note if I come here and I group these, that little red dot appears just to remind you you've done something and you haven't clicked save. So just go click save. So those are some of the ways that you can customize your profit and loss or balance sheet layout using groups, headings, equations, and categories. You've learned the difference between a category and a group, and I hope you feel equipped to go and customize your profit and loss and balance sheet layouts to make sure that they look exactly the way you need them to.